these deer. Well, see, I come back right. uh, training. Let's get involved in this thing now. Come I on. am. I am. Okay. But if you want your lover so much, it's the obvious thing for you to do, since he's no longer allowed on these premises. It's only because I love you that I'm doing this. You are mad. I'll kick his head off. Oh, another glass, Carl. Let's <laughs> get a little carried away. From now on, it's going to be nothing more than badminton players in this bloody place. <laughs> Football players. <laughs> <laughs> has lost the need, but not the urge for the hunt. This is the story of three who are hunters. For each, the game of football is the common ground. For each, a spirit burns brightly, but differently, away from the field of play. For Big Ben Davidson, the hunt is for solitude and an escape from the notoriety of his career as an Oakland Raider. For tough, tiny Walt Garrison of the Dallas Cowboys, the search is in another direction. He seeks still more action as a steer wrestler on the rodeo circuit. For Carl Eller, one of the genuine superstars of the game, the hunt is for self-expression and an immortality that will last beyond his football career. Since 1964, when he joined the Minnesota Vikings as their number one draft choice, Eller's excellence at defensive end has made him a star. As the Vikings grew from an expansion team into the football power known as the Purple Gang, Carl Eller became a unanimous all-pro and the reigning prince of defensive linemen in the National Football League. I like getting the job done, tackling the quarterback, making him lose 10 yards, but I like it better if I've gotten the hit. The hit is really what you're after, because that's the part that says you did it the way that you wanted to do it. Oh, man, I was on here, man. I gave him a good lick over there, too. Is he? Yeah. Yeah, I gave him a good lick. I'd like to be remembered as a great defensive end. I'd like to go down alongside all the other great defensive linemen that have ever played the game. I'd like to stand out in all the things, tackling the quarterback, defensing against the run, all the things that make a great defensive end. I'd like the simple statement, he was a great defensive end. Carl Eller's quest for accomplishment has led him to Hollywood, where he's exposed himself to the difficult dream of an actor's life. Okay, let's get into positions then. Okay. In positions, come on. I have all day. Okay. I'll tell you when to go. 
action. Do you think it's pleasant to know that your wife has been unfaithful to you? Two or three times a week? All right, cut. That's that same damn yeah, line yeah. reading. Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, right? Two or three times a week? Yeah, right. The hell difference right. does it make? It's right, like, right, you know, right, right, okay. Right? It's, it's just, uh, okay, I'm ready. All right. All right, let's go. Okay. Do you think it's pleasant to know that your wife has been unfaithful to you two or three times a week with great regularity? It's insupportable. It's insupportable. Okay, re relax. M make your moves positive. Mm -hmm. You're waltzing around, you're dancing around here like, you know, tip, 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 toe. Don't do that. Right, yeah. Okay. All right. All right, now... Play your action. Play directly right, to her. Right, 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 right. Okay. Get it on, you know. Okay. You, 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 And the game means everything to you. You love your lover. Hmm? <laughs> okay, and he's your lover. Okay, let's try it. Do you think it's pleasant to know that your wife has been unfaithful to you two or three times a week with great regularity? It's insupportable. It has become insupportable. Okay, go back and take it again. Don't start to get up until you get up. You anticipated. Okay. You got ready to get up. <laughs> All right, you're too insupportable. Right. It's become insupportable. All right, come on. All right, let's go. Come on. Okay. Carol. There you're crossing your legs like a girl again. That's, that's, that's okay. I'm, I'm go ahead if you like that. Thing. Okay. It looks better than this. We just stop. Yeah, that's nice. Right. Quiet people. Do you think it's pleasant to know that your wife has been unfaithful to you two or three times a week? It's insupportable! And I, know I thought, oh my God, you know, what am I going to do with a, a dumb football player? Well, it turned out that he wasn't dumb at all. And it turned out that he worked probably harder than any student I've ever had. And I finally figured out that it must be the sense of discipline that an athlete must impose upon himself. I think that Carl's greatest point, strangely enough, considering that he's an athlete, is his sensitivity. He's done scenes in the class that required a great amount of deep inner sensitivity and has carried it off beautifully. He can be very soft and gentle, which plays against his massive appearance physically. And, and that's something kind of rare. If I come on these premises again, I'll kick his teeth out. I'll kick his head in. Oh, how what about your own Cut. Take that again. Come on. Uh, you know, don't slap it like a sissy. If you're going to do something, do something. Let's go now. Okay? okay? In other words, you're not involved in the bloody thing. All this anticipating, right? These are the first time he's ever said these lines. Okay, let's make it look like the first okay. time. Okay. And don't you dare look out here at me. I'm not. I'm not here. I'm not there. Right? You're alone in your apartment. Right. You're right. alone. Okay, let's go. Whip it on. Okay. Let's make it fly now. From there? From yeah. the top? From the top. Okay. If I catch him on these premises again, I'll kick his teeth in. I'll kick his head in! You don't mind him. My search is for immortality, oh. to be remembered. I'm trying to make a place for Carl Eller in acting. I want what I do now to live on as I live. That's what I'm really after, is an immortality. Something to live past in my football days. Adulterous. All right. For next week, then, have it. Have it down. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll see the next scene. I would have to describe myself as uh, being a country boy, really. Not a city slicker by no means. You know, I, I don't like to live in town. I don't like downtown Dallas, you know, with the crowds and the stoplights and everything. I like it out. It's relaxing to me to be with the guys around the rodeo arena. You know, they're a, they're a different breed of people. They're a different, you know, a different kind of people. They're all kind of country people like myself. Walt Garrison, the only real cowboy on the Dallas Cowboys, has been riding the rodeo circuit since the age of 14. Known as one of the top bulldoggers in the world of rodeo, Garrison perfectly fits the mold of the typical Texas cowboy. I started chewing tobacco when I was about 15, I guess, or 16. I don't chew during the game, you know, at all. You could swallow that, and that'd probably make you sick. But I chew, you know, sometimes during practice. 
chewing around the house, I've got two, three of these brass, big brass patoons like they come out of a, an old bar room, you know. But when we travel on the road, I've got a little cuspidor that my mother gave me when I was in college, you know, that sets up on the dashboard, you know, it leans up against the window. If I had to pick my favorite country singer, it would be close between uh, Charlie Pride and Merle Haggard. Well, I didn't know there was any other kind of music other than country music, and uh, still don't. I don't I don't like the other music, you know, and I don't listen to it. If I play a record, well, it's a country record. I don't even have any other records. You know, people that like hard rock, it's just a bunch of hollering and screaming. You can't understand that. But uh, country music all tells a story, you know, it really does. Every song just about tells a story. If I had to pick a, a book, you know, my favorite book, it's by Ben K. Green. He was an old-timey veterinarian from over here at Weatherford, Texas. He's got two books that are really good. I think the, the one I would pick out is the best one, the one they call Horse Trading. I think the biggest thrill, possibly in the NFL, would be the Super Bowl. Walt Garrison was indeed fortunate to play in the 1970 Super Bowl. For during the season, the ground game had become the heart of the Dallas offense. And hard-nosed Walt Garrison was its best inside runner. Like Braille reading, number 32 traveled by touch. His plays were the tough ones, from tackle to tackle through the biggest men in professional football. The long, hard season took its toll, but Walt Garrison endured a private pain. Then in the championship game, it caught up with him. Garrison broke a collarbone and sprained an ankle, but only minutes later came off the bench to lead his team to the winning touchdown. The score was a pass caught by a gutty guy named Garrison. He had to be carried onto the plane back to Dallas. Yet two weeks later in the Super Bowl, Walt Garrison was in the starting lineup. He played hurt, and he played well. Walt Garrison is now used as the criterion for toughness on the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, uh, Cowboy. And Bill Pickett, they say, is the one that uh, originated Bulldog. He threw the steer down, he bit him in the lip with his teeth and threw him that away. In fact, I think they had some standing bed or something he could hold in his steer for five minutes or 10 minutes just, you know, with his mouth. You know, I don't know, that's probably a lie or something, but I've heard it probably a thousand times at rodeos. The object of steer racing is to uh, twist the steer down by the horns and, and neck, you know, to the ground, where he's laying flat on his side with his head and all four feet the same direction, and the fastest time wins. The anticipation, you know, is just like before they call, you know, a play in football. It's the feeling, you know, it's just a, a, a good feeling there in the shoot to, uh, to know that any second, just, just when you nod your head, that it's all going to take place. I think the reason that I do rodeo in the off season, I've got to have that competition, you know. I'm hunting for the competition year round. I don't want it to quit. In the off season, I'd rather them think of me as, you know, as Walt Gerson, the rodeo cowboy or a rodeo bum than Walt Gerson, the football player. For Ben Davidson, the hunt is down a different road. He seeks solitude in the lush sanctuary of Southern California.
With the pressures one has playing football, when I get on my motorcycle, my search is for solitude and peace and quiet to be away from people. Take him there! Ah! Ah! Come on, big boy! A sport of heroes, Ben Davidson has made his mark as a villain, parlaying a red mustache on top of a six-foot-eight-inch frame. Davidson has earned the reputation as one of the meanest men in football. For Big Ben, a chorus of booze is music to play football by. From the 67 Super Bowl with Green Bay to this season's championship against Baltimore, Davidson has proved his reputation for controversy is well deserved. I believe I have a bad reputation. That doesn't bother me. I'm in a sport and a profession that isn't really a picnic. It gets a little vicious out there at times, and uh, it's the old saying, you fight fire with fire. The most publicized incident in Davidson's career occurred in New York, where he welcomed Joe Namath to the AFL with a broken jaw. I did feel bad. Uh, it wasn't a very nice thing for me to have done. I think Joe's been upset with me over that ever since. When you're introduced and uh, the people boo, I think you're better off. It's better to be introduced and have some sort of a reaction out of the crowd instead of just complete silence. So uh, if they uh, love me in Oakland or they hate me in Kansas City or New York, uh, that's fine with me, just so I get some reaction out of them. Through the years, head-to-head -head confrontation with the Chiefs and Len Dawson has brought out the best in Davidson. But this year's duel with Dawson was the most notable of them all. An unfortunate incident happened. Len Dawson bootlegged out to his right, and Len tripped over one of his own men. But I made sure I touched him down good, and uh, people took exception to what I did. bother me what people in uh, Kansas City might think. I never heard anything from Len Dawson, so uh, I hope he still likes me. There have been several times that I've hit people and I was genuinely worried uh, whether I'd hurt them or not. Mel Farr in a game on Thanksgiving Day this past season. Mel had been tackled, but he uh, came up from his knees and tried to keep his balance, and I tried to jump over him, but my knee hit the side of his head, and uh, I was worried that I'd hurt him. I came back and said, Mel, Mel, are you all right? And uh, he didn't say anything. He was temporarily knocked out. But one of his teammates came over and told me to get out of there, so I did. <laughs> I enjoy doing uh, silly things now and then on the football field. For instance, uh, Jim Tyre, the Chiefs, uh, jumped off sides one time last season. Uh, so I pushed him, and he came back and pushed me, and I fell down. Well, I had all kinds of great reactions out of that. Some people said I must be a real patsy to go down that easy. Some people said that's the funniest thing they've ever seen. And some people said, why didn't you get up and hit him back? They thought it was serious. Well, I get some great hate mail. Uh, some of my uh, real entertaining moments have been spent reading hate mail. It's great. I put them all on the locker room wall, and the whole team comes by to see my latest hate mail. And uh, it's very entertaining. Keep them coming in, folks. You guys ready to swim? Not too cold today for you, is it? Those who pen the letters, chant the booze, or incur okay. his wrath on the field Stop. might be surprised to discover another, less Welcome celebrated to side to Ben Davidson. You got your hair clips out and everything? Oh, you want to jump in first or you want to start right out? Okay. Why do you have to wear this, Jim? All right, how's that? All right, get up on the blocks. Better not splash me, either. Let's go fast now, and I'll time you. 25 meter. 25 meter fly, and Vic's 25 meter breast. Ready? Stop. <laughs> OK, ready? Ready? Oh! 
I'm very happy having three girls. They're all three healthy and they're active and they're good little girls. Would have liked to have had a son, but I'm plenty happy with three healthy, vigorous young girls. They're growing up to be good athletes and I'll be able to live vicariously through their athletic excellence. Way to go, Vic. <laughs> your little sister beat you, Jenny. If you didn't look around so much and see where your sisters were, you could do a lot better. All right, let's have a little handicap race. Okay, now, ready? Up! Ready, Dane, go! Up! I'm not a very good swimmer myself. In fact, uh, I swam in a father-daughter relay, and my daughters all had better times than I did in the relay. <laughs> You know, people expect big things out of you when you're a professional athlete and you get up there and you look like you're in good shape and that some overweight 45-year-old uh, father beats you. It's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> hey, you guys are both coasting in. You know, you could get one more stroke. You almost got her, Vic. Okay, how about a 50 fly now? 50 fly? All right, you guys ready? Yeah. All right, build up your legs on this one. Get strong legs so you can play football when you grow up. Okay, ready? Up! As Ben Davidson knows, a man can find great peace of mind losing a race to a middle-aged, overweight opponent in a father-daughter relay. To Ben Davidson, his family is a kind of sanctuary. His motorcycling is yet another. Riding a motorcycle, I think, is my means of escape. I can commune with nature and watch the countryside go by let the wind blow through my hair and uh, get away from it all. I feel kind of an affinity with all of the early explorers. In fact, one thing that bothers me is that the Earth is getting so small and there's really nothing left. I majored in geography at the University of Washington. I'm kind of a map freak. There's nothing that gives me more pleasure than sitting down and studying a map for a couple of hours. My favorite book probably is a guidebook to Lower California. I can read that by the hour over and over. I saw the film Easy Rider, and to me, the trip on a motorcycle was the thing, not the trip on anything else. Six foot eight with a mustache, people recognize you and want to talk about football. It's just nice for me to get away on a motorcycle and be alone and uh, just hear the wind and be the master of your own ship for a while, not worrying about anything or anywhere and just go and be free. <laughs> 